Now let's take a look at Cramer's rule. We know that Cramer's rule requires taking the determinant of a matrix as well as switching the columns of a matrix. So it'll be useful to know how to call elements from a matrix and take determinants. We'll start off by defining our function. We'll call it Cramer. We need to input a matrix A and a vector of the right hand side B. Now let's picture what we want to do here. We'll need to switch the columns of A depending on how long the matrix is. So we'll need the length of A in our function. Now we need to do the actual column switching before we can take the determinants and do our divisions. The easiest way to do this is to create a table that contains A n times, then manipulate each element of the table. So di will be a table containing a n times. Now that we have our table of a's, we can go ahead and start switching the columns of the a's with our b vector. To do this, we'll use the do loop we learned earlier because we need to repeat the process n times. So now do. Now let's look at di. Since it's a table that contains n by n matrices, that makes it a three-dimensional matrix. That just means that we'll need an extra comma in our square bracket. So we take di. We want its ith matrix, all of its rows, and its ith column. And we want to set that equal to b. And we want i going from 1 to n. Okay, now that we have a table of matrices with some of the columns switched with b, we can go ahead and take the determinants of matrices in di and divide them by the determinant a. We should output the solution set in a vector with a length dependent on n, so we can go ahead and use the table function. So x is a table containing the determinant of di of i divided by the determinant of a from 1 to n. Close that bracket. And now if we look at this formula, it's the same as this formula we have up here. Except I'll go ahead and capitalize this A. And this is all we need for our function. Let's go ahead and test it with a simple matrix. So Kramer, and we'll just make the identity matrix. And then our solution set will just be 1, 2, and 3. And because this is the identity matrix, we expect 1, 2, and 3 as our output. Now let's see if that works. And indeed it did. So we know our function works for the identity matrix. It's important to note that the function we defined here doesn't work when the determinant of A is 0. So we can improve it by checking if the determinant of A is 0, printing an error message if it is, and then proceeding if it isn't. In the next part of the tutorial, we'll take a look at programming a function that performs gauze elimination.